And, and that's how we start today's 4th of July podcast. As I mentioned last night, I will be doing a um, another part to the Independence Day message in a little bit. But uh, here's what I'm thinking today. Uh, yes, on uh, the video stream, I'm wearing my Mount Rushmore shirt because I do believe in that monument. Uh, it was, you know, Mount, Mount Rushmore was carved into what is known as, uh, to the Lakota Sioux as a mountain called the Six Grandfathers. Well, these founding fathers have made a home there, made a tourism spot there, and made a national park there. And so for that display last night, it was remarkable. And it, if you watched it, I, I think you would get actually hope out of it. I would hope so anyway. But today, I truly believe it is about, and I could talk about this on blue in the face, about keeping freedoms intact. We, you know, 244 years ago today, the Founding Fathers laid the groundwork for this country, freedom, July 4th, 1776. And, and now it's up to us to keep those freedoms going, alive and kicking in many ways. We've seen uh, a different kind, I think you'd say, of freedoms that are needed. Uh, freedom to be able to know that the bad apples of the NYPD, of the police departments across the country are taken out. Freedoms Freedoms that the um, and here he is, Mike Myers has joined the chat, literally joined. La, da, da, da. Michael Myers, how are you, sir? Radio Hope. Hi. I am feeling on fire. I was talking about the freedoms and you might interject here where I was thinking, but I think 244 years later in this time, we've seen freedom be a little bit, um, take on a different meaning. Um, they, there is a group out there that doesn't want the police department to have bad apples. And I agree with them on that. Yeah. But, duh. And, and I think that is part of moving freedom forward, right? If we know the bad apples are out there, we can freely protect our country even more. And I do think that would help the communities that feel afraid, which they shouldn't, but they do feel freer in this country. But well, I, mm -hmm. oh, to that, I would say this. I don't know of any, I mean, I don't think uh, we realize we have bad apples until we see the fruit of the apple. What the heck? So, I mean, that's a given. So to me, it's like nothing's really, nothing's really, I don't think anything's really changed except maybe a little more, maybe we'll be a little more careful in uh, vetting people for certain positions of power. And, it, and, and being right, a cop yeah. is a power position. It really is, but you just can't let it go to your head. I saw a video this morning. A you know, position, sorry. A daily scroll of, of TikTok. I saw this family had a baby choking. They ran from a protest to an actual officer to get help. They went from an anti-cop protest to actually get help. And so this is, this is the whole thing. They're still gonna call 911. I actually, now that I think of it, don't like that people say, well, you shouldn't call 911 if you're in trouble. No, you can feel a certain way, but you should also know the cops are there to help at the same time. Oh, wait a minute. So somebody told somebody else in a moment of, of, of need, tremendous need, you shouldn't call 911? 
no, no, no. There's just this this meme, so to speak, this humorous thing that if you well, actually, it's become quite serious. If you don't like the police, you shouldn't call nine one one. I think that's a terrible message to send. Actually. Well, that's what but, I guess. That's what I was just trying to say. I mean, if it's a meme or whatever, it's just stupid. It's stu- who are you going to call? Ghostbusters? What the hell is up with people anymore? <laughs> and the, and that is. And that is one. By the way, I'm rocking my Mount Rushmore shirt today. Mm. I I saw the fireworks. I didn't hear. Oh my gosh. I didn't hear his speech. I need to hear it, it, don't I? It was brightening. And here's the funny thing: some people say it was dark. It was divine. No, it was not. It was such a positive message for America. And I don't even want to say when I was talking to people the way I was speaking because. I'm just like, you now hate a speech that is focused on America? So then are we anti-Trump here or are we sort of leaning into anti-America? That's kind of how I feel when I see these arguments. Now. It's, it's getting crazy. So, so this morning, for some reason, I don't know why I ended up looking this up, but Romans 16, verse 17, I urge you, brothers and sisters, to watch out for those who cause divisions and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teaching you have learned. Keep away from them. Wow. Mm. And yet, Very much so. we're to always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you for the reason, for the hope that you have. But do it with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience, so that those who speak maliciously against you, your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. Wow. So it's just really doing things in a in the right way. Right. And by the way, right, right, I, right, right, right. I almost, I don't know if you do this or if you have done this before on such as momentous and say, this is a his sacred holiday, um, July the 4th. <laughs> but I don't know if you've done this, but I kind of almost teared up thinking like all the stuff I've been through. And by the way, I'm cutting out the cursing because I want these to be demo reels for a possible radio show. So I'm going to not curse anymore. Anyway. Good for uh, you. Good. Uh, Anyway, I just almost teared up. I'm like, you know, the last four years under Trump have been tough for me personally because I've undergone a lot of different, not abuses, but people telling me I'm this, that, and the other. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Three different relationships that failed. Um, so I'm just thinking, here I am sitting here today, happier than I've been in a while on the 4th of July. And that is godly. And... It's just nice to be able to celebrate it. And then you think back and like my deeper thing is a kid in the the queue for 77 days could then be on July 4th, 2020, speaking about the Declaration of Independence. There's something chilling about that. I don't care how many times I say it. I'm just going to keep hammering it home because there's something that matters to me about that. It's a, ooh, it's something that matters. Hmm. It does. Last night uh, when the they were doing the fireworks, you know, behind Mount Rushmore, I had this. This was one of those moments you're talking about. Mm. I had my uh, little granddaughter on my knee as we're watching. She's just glued to the screen on my computer. I'm, I got goosebumps on my freaking goosebumps. Oh, my gosh. It was just powerful. And I am proud to be mm. an American. I am very blessed and mm. i'm glad you said what you did just now because it, it's just a reminder that you know we've come a long way baby yeah we all have to get and where we've got to yep. today and by the way um that, that what you just said attacked this is what i feel too we have to recognize that turning off our social media turning off our face our our tvs you just see the world around you we're still intact there's still a nation intact, despite what they want you to tell us. There's still a nation intact. So, last night, and this has to do with what you're talking about, I'm not, uh, fireworks. Mm-hmm. We had fireworks. <laughs> and I was really encouraged this morning on Facebook, this is why I don't think I can completely disconnect because it was very positive. There were so many people thrilled with the local display of 
fireworks. And I know there are a lot of people that weren't very happy. My neighbor lady was not a happy camper. My wife, still not a happy camper. And I said, well, mm. you know what? I It's just different. I, I'm I'm glad they weren't right next door to me because I don't want my house burnt down. But that's what I was worried about, too, because I hear them right next door. It's like a little unnerving when they're literally right in front of your house. <laughs> well, and I did. And they were all around my house. And in fact, there were, there were so many fireworks shot off last night. It was like a <laughs> it was like a fog <laughs> that moved through the neighborhood. It was very humid. And, and but I really. I sat out there with my beer, my Doritos, and my cheese, and just really enjoyed the evening. For those who are joining us, I'm talking with Radio Hope, by the way, 9 a.m. Eastern. Nice reset. And because I'm, I'm dying, dying, I shouldn't say dying. I am itching to know what you're talking about today, this morning for July 4th. It sounds like it's going to be the experiences you had. Uh, <laughs> after all that. And last night, it's it's a called to a quiet life, <laughs> with all the bombs bursting in air. Uh oh, that's not; those weren't bombs. Those were fireworks. There's a difference, and I and I understand. You know, the I, I don't understand PTSD, but or I. Well, see, and this is where this is where the New York City community of veterans got really ticked. You're going to put these fireworks unannounced at different places five minutes. Oh. And there are probably veterans in that neighborhood. I mean, I, I can understand why people were ticked about that part of it. Came off well. I, know, I don't know if you saw the pictures I posted, but looked like it was some nice displays. But the idea that you would do it unannounced really is um, cumbersome to everybody. Not just people with PTSD. People have kids. People have animals. I mean, yes. Really, this move was such no. a strange move to begin with because you don't want to have this, you don't want people to go out there because of COVID and yet people are gathering everywhere else. It's like, just announce where they're going to be. You know, I, I kind of like the idea of having fireworks leading up to the fourth. I just like would have liked to know where they were hours before instead of five minutes before. Well, and one of the things my wife said, but I think was very wise, she said it would be nice if, if you know, we would have a place where people could spend their bucks and go shoot off their fireworks, uh, you know, kind of a citywide thing and have a fire truck or two. Mm -hmm. So just like what you're saying, so you can go instead of, because it was, I could, it was, it was weird. I enjoyed it. All I can tell you is I enjoyed it. I know a lot of people didn't. I enjoyed it, and I'm not going to feel bad because I enjoyed it. Michael, I know that you're, and that's great, but as you were talking about places to go, I was just thinking of this. There are still businesses closed down on July the 4th because yeah. of lockdown that's still going on, and I think of them too on this day. I, re I think of the business owners that on a normal 4th of July would be able to be open and they're just not. And it's, it hurts to know that even 244 years later, some freedoms, like having your business open, still has to be fought for. Uh, yeah. And there are places that are now, do you, are you guys mandated in New York City to wear masks still or not? We are required and only in different places, but not when I'm outside. Like you're not totally required. You won't get fined if you're not on the outside but but there was a time where you w could have been fine you would have been i fine. thought there was that going on too but i it seems they have relaxed that actually because so. that is kind of oh i don't know it, you know we were talking yesterday about uh maybe not being able to spread it if you've already had it and i've been doing some reading and and it, that may not be the case i don't know i just can't for me i just can't i can't live in this I can't live in the fear, but I don't want to be part of the problem. I don't want to go out and cough on people. Right. You know? Well, I will tell you, I well, was you shouldn't want to shouldn't want to do that anyway. That's kind no. Of and that's why actually they don't get enough credit for this. The DOJ was going after people that were coughing in other people's faces. Did you hear about this? Were they doing that on purpose? Well, yeah, they were going after 
quote, quote unquote COVID spread, you know, people that, you know, oh, that's are spit in people's faces. Um, there, that was a real thing. Let me see if I can pull it up here. Hold on a second. Uh, I spit in your general direction. No, this was, this was a big deal. Uh, here, uh, just as an example, this was incredible. Uh, let me share this for you. Same Peter, yeah. Same Peter's man indicted for threatening to spread COVID nineteen by spitting on coughing and coughing on police officers. Oh boy. With perpetrating huh. a biological weapon hoax. Uh, I mean, so they were tough on this, and you know what? I'm very happy they were, because I think there were more cases that that one stood out though. Because if you got people out there spitting, I, I heard a story of a of a man spitting on a Chinese, Asian American in the bathroom at Port Authority and uh, at Penn Station. I'm just like, come on, come on. I thought, and you know what I was most hoping for is that this whole COVID experience will bring us all together. I really think it's not. I think we're still the same people, even after all of this <laughs> distress we've gone through. Oh my gosh, what a great, I'm glad you, you, you put that because what are we? What are, I, I, I just think what you just said is powerful because, you know, growing, I, I'm just thinking of growing in the grace and knowledge of Christ, growing more Christ-like. And for me to be, to want to pick up a baseball bat and beat somebody because everything is going on. Of course, that's not what Jesus would do. <laughs> no, no. So it has been. It, it's been a, you know, everything works together for the good, for those who love God and called according to his plan. So this really need for, for working for good for me I, is how do I respond with everything that's going on? How do I respond to my wife who's not a happy camper about last night? Our little mm. dog is just going nuts. I mean. Mm. And, how about uh, the cats? Are they in distress too, the cats? Or? Uh, oh, we do, we do have a cat. Um, no, cats, cats okay. Well, that's true. I guess cats don't feel it as much as the dogs do. I mean, dogs go nuts. They go wild if they start here. Actually, the cat was in the cradle. With a silver spoon? Now, if you notice, that took me a minute to think of the lyric, but then it just was like total recall for me to figure it out in one second. Are you laughing in your cup? Okay, I just swallow. Whoo, don't do that, man. Oh, did I make you no it, laugh it just, on your hot coffee? And my hot coffee. <laughs> yeah, my New York's coming out. I never really had this accent before. I'm gonna give my coffee COVID. <laughs> <laughs> That's just weird, Myers. You are weird. Even on July the 4th, the most sacred holiday, you are weird, and it's proud to be weird. Hey, will there be a mail delivery today? Uh, no, because everything's off. So. Well, but yesterday was the official holiday, right? Yes, as a matter of fact, that is true. The, yesterday so I'm just off. curious if, uh, if, if... I don't know, Mike, I'll Google it for you if you need me to. I, I want to go... I, well, I just wanted to go more in debt. I got a new credit card coming, so... Oh my god. <laughs> uh, anyway, hey, focus. Speaking of proud, also my brain this morning is that I think we have to just stop listening to those who say we can't be proud of this country. We just have to stop listening to them. And I it does bother me, but I gotta not let it bother me. I gotta not think, am I doing the right or wrong thing by supporting America? I have to know I'm supporting the right thing of America, despite what some want to tell us about what they think of America. God bless the USA. So get this. So tomorrow, this has to do with what we're talking about. Tomorrow morning at 8 Central Daylight Time, uh, Miles McKee will be sharing a sermon. There's a friend of his that uh, sent me an MP3 file of him doing uh, I th uh, I think God bless the USA. Cool. Well, yes and no, because he's singing it or 
he sang it and uh but the question was you know the the number of people that are listening to this my spreaker channel or whatever you call it there's a, a 10 percent times two uk and india and so miles response was my, my first thought was nah maybe it's not a good idea you know being political and all when you're talking mm -hmm. worldwide um so I, th I thought it was kind of interesting we're going to go ahead and use it uh, because of another reason that it, he wanted this gentleman wanted it to be used but uh i thought that was you know okay so i i have a political opinion but do I, how much of the political soapbox do I occupy in doing the Radio Hope thing? I don't think you occupy much because I know that you're more focused on the spiritual and the, and the godly side of this country more so than the political side of it. And yet, I, 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 and this isn't a slam against Ed, but I do like the fact that he you know, it's reminded me, I can't just hush, but again, with Jen, I think we have a president that is, that is our president for just a time like this. We, we needed this. We needed him, even though he's got, a, who doesn't have a mouth? Gee whiz. Who well, let me ask you this. If, if POTUS wasn't POTUS, if it was <laughs> Hillary, would this have all gone down or is this just a pure who against Trump? Oh my gosh, that's a very good point. Where would we be today? And that's why, again, I would have to say for such a time as this, we're at a, we're at a very serious point in our nation and uh, we could go either direction. And I, I think maybe Trump, isn't he a little, hasn't he been taking some, some cues from his son-in-law? Yeah, and they're trying to get him away from that whole thing, Jared Kushner and all that, and it seems to not be working. Last night, I don't know who wrote his speech, but uh, and he might, you know, he might have written it because I think he has a genuine love of this country. I couldn't agree with you more. And he has a love of the history that I've never seen any president have. He will list off every he list off every accomplishment Lincoln did, Roosevelt did, Washington did. I mean, I've never heard a president speak of our history like that. And I was, I was very impressed. And uh, by the way, of course, Lincoln freed the slaves. That was the first, that was the thing that comes to my mind when they say we got to take down Lincoln. And Michael, they're going to try and, they're going to attempt a protest on Gettysburg today. Oh, the really? The ground of abolition, of the abolition movement, is to me Gettysburg. With the address, with the Emancipation Proclamation, and yet they're going to burn a flag there like that. See how it's, it's, it's almost uh. endless the way they're operating. Right now. But here's why I think even under Hillary, this would have kept going. Um, in 2016 and 2015, I think we started to see a little more uprising in, in certain ways. Like after Ferguson, they actually started to burn down Ferguson, Missouri. Um, uh. I mean, it, they've had these spurts before. So I think it could have kept going. I just think... <clears throat> I think no matter what, there was a sector that was emboldened the last few years, aside from Trump, and that sector is now acting out. And I, I don't want to say crush them, but we have to crush those that want to literally cause harm and danger and chaos by tearing down statues on city streets. You know, and it, it, we do have to dominate that and harness it before it gets worse. It really, again, I, I'm looking at this verse again because I'm. There's just quite a struggle. I got, I got, I got to in, I got an inside struggle with the, what's the proper way to, respond to this stuff. I think sometimes you know if you're silent, of course, then your silence is killing us, and and yet silence is golden, and sometimes silence is a good thing, and I don't know. I don't know. I think I, I think I dwell on it too much and I got to quit doing that too. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff that Mike, I go at need. your pace. That's all I got to say. Go at your pace and not let anybody else tell you, Hey, you should speak up more on this or you should speak up more on this. Go at your pace and do it at the way you need to do it. And you know what? That is great advice coming from, coming from you. 
that is, it shows God is still in the business of doing miracles. I mean, out of the mouths of babes. I mean, no, that's really good advice. It is just be, and I do like this when Ed says, just do you. Now, I don't mean that in a, you know what I mean? All right, let's keep this nice. But, nice. but, <laughs> but and, I, and, and I think it, what's cool too, and this, you said that you're going to try to watch the language. When I first mm. started that whole thing and people were on my case about, oh, you're just letting people micromanage you. And I love Bob Huber. I love him dearly. But he was one of them who says, man, then you're not being you. Well, maybe that me isn't really the me that, you know, maybe that's not the new me. That shouldn't be. The old is gone. The new has come. I'm a new creation. So what the? Oh, he almost did it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you know, we're in a FCC regulated. So, like, if I'm frustrated, yeah, I might drop it. But I'm trying to. Yesterday, it really bothered me that I was just throwing those words out there. And like, I think it's cool that it bothered you. And and I'm glad that it did because it's kind of a it's a check for me. It's like okay, Mike, you were like, oh, cool. He cussed, Janelle. I heard her say fart. Yeah, that was it. I heard. Oh, cool. Janelle's just a. You know what it does prove? Tell you're me. human. You're human. I'm human. We're all human. But, mm -hmm. but to use that as an excuse to be so not adult. I mean, yeah. sometimes I think it shows our. You know, hey, he's got two word vocabulary, mm. F and this <laughs> or that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, anyway. You know, Early. the other thing about I just, I also love that I was picked up on self reliance because this conversation just turned to that feel to me. Like our country was made to do what we want to do on our own time. So we don't have to bow down. In fact, the submissive culture that I'm seeing now is so ridiculous. We're submitting in ways that are saying we can't have Aunt Jemima anymore. We're submitting in ways that are saying we, uh, we can't call it the master bedroom now. You know, John Legend called that out and he said, well, why aren't we giving blacks an opportunity to get better housing? Why are we worrying about the name of a bedroom when we can't even get the communities into better housing? I'm like, that is so spot on. Like, we, we, we're missing the point when we do all this. I'm sorry, Aunt Jemima's syrup being renamed won't stop, you know, <laughs> it's won't stop the next altercation. It's ridiculous. And now these teams are going to reevaluate what their names are. It's, it's really. And well, I wouldn't mind it if it was done out of the goodness of someone's heart. But when you think of it in the bigger picture of the submissive culture to, to a yep. second want us to eradicate everything, that bothers me 20,000 times over. Well, I did, I did file a complaint with uh, Sam's Club. Oh, no. Why? Well, because when we were there the other day, I did notice that um, you can still buy black pepper. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, I couldn't find Aunt Jemima syrup. Is there Aunt Jemima syrup or is it just pancake mix? There's syrup. I mean, there was bottles of syrup. I took a picture of it. Well, all I saw was Mrs. Butterworth's. And what's I was... The, a, I was a, huh? What's her deal, Mrs. Butterworth? Well, I mean, you got Mrs. Butterworth, then, then you got Aunt Jemima. You got... I mean, I... I, I to not have Aunt Jemima syrup available, I I thought that was mm. no, no, I didn't. I just can't but, keep it. Just there's so many things I just want to. Well, and make, this is the bigger picture. Of. Yeah, this is the bigger picture. And by the way, I know I'm probably gonna catch flack, but my second part of today is gonna be reading and kind of breaking down speeches from Washington and Jefferson. <clears throat> See, I don't really relate to to um. Andrew Jackson, I don't, it, I have to figure out exactly what he did. I think people are either jumping the gun on him or there was some serious stuff, which I have to really look into. He's an actor, right? Andrew Jackson? Yeah. Is that a black guy? Oh, president of the United States? Oh, 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 Samuel Jackson's. I was thinking of Samuel Oh, Michael. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, Andrew Jackson's Sunday, Bloody Sunday. I, I think he had a couple massacres on his hand. I could be wrong on that. He also was part of that end of Reconstruction era, if I'm not mistaken. So I got to read more on that. 
But I will read Jefferson because any man who can spend a night writing the, con the declaration like he did, like he stayed up all night to write it, it means he had such a passion to make this country a free one. Wow. See, I didn't know that. See, those are things that, I, that, 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 that David, uh, the guy, the, the Bible, why can't it, Barton? Yeah. I yeah. really need to get that. It's, I know exactly where it's at, and the wife is wanting to read it too. And I said, Yeah, well, we're both doing a great job at that, aren't we? It's still sitting right there. Michael, have you ever read the, have you ever read the De Declaration of Independence from first word to last? <sighs> Probably one time in school, maybe. I don't know. I read it last night, the whole oh. thing, and I feel kind of nerdy, but I did. Why I do you feel, why do you feel nerdy? I don't know. Like, it's, it's, it, it, most, People my age on a Friday night would be out drinking. I'm here reading the declarations, so I guess I'm on the better and, foot. And I, and I thank God that you are one of those people that, you know, you're not the, you're right. You're not the normal 28-year-old. Well, also because I have prepared a podcast that I really was itching to do because I wanted to speak on all this and I wanted to delve into it. But here's a line that I find very interesting from the Declaration of Independence. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Governed. Us. We consent the people. to what the government does. So why do we spend a few months here literally letting them have us consent to them? That's not what the declaration is about. And now we're talking to a mandatory mask thing federally? No, that's a state's issue. That is not a federal issue of mine. So people that understand, here's, here's a for instance, I uh, had a guy on here a while ago and uh, I think there's some new updates here. Institution on the Constitution, lesson, lesson number 11, the Constitution course. This is a free course. I haven't even gotten through lesson number one. And yet at the time I was talking to this guy, I was so pumped about the constitution. I can't freaking, I mean, what's most important? That's what it comes down to. What is, what's most important? Our country is extremely important. And I see it going down because we don't know what our constitution says. I don't even know if we know what the Declaration says. If you don't read it, you don't know it. So it's oh, like people know like the that Bible. line. It, yeah, well, and if people see that line and hear that line, deriving their just power from the consent of the governed, that hopefully wakes people up a little more. I don't know. I can only do what I can, I guess. Um, and Mike, have, you're, you can too. Well, I have a, I have a booklet on the Constitution on my desk here somewhere you think and i have read it i had it by my bedside a couple of times probably been six months ago but i did end up reading the whole thing and uh i think it's important that we know what the constitution says and quit letting other people you know regurgitate it for us and say well this is what it really says no this is mm. what it says and by the way did you know this was a 10-year struggle this is amazing to me patrick henry the give me liberty or give me death uh, speaker uh -huh. said it to the Continental Congress, you know, that they've for 10 years worked on trying to wake the king up. Hey, we need, you're not treating us fairly. You're treating us different than England. You're uh -huh. not, you're treating us as if you own us. 10 years they were negotiating. Well, we got into a war and we won the war. And so I just can't, I, I am amazed that it took 10 years. And now my bigger picture is if it took 10 years to get this country free, why are we going to throw it away in one year or two years? If it took 244 years, then 10 more. So that's like 254 years to get this country where it's supposed to be. Why are we determined <clears throat> to let, and I'm not saying everybody's determined actually. And that's right. But, but I feel like there's a general sense of letting this thing all be okay, letting the statues come down, letting the sun and the other happen. Uh, and it's like a race of 254 years of progress. 
and I, as much as I hate to say it, I think it's because a lot of us are just extremely apathetic. It's like we don't, I hate to, I hate to, it's like we don't care. I mean, I'm talking about myself right now. Am I going to stand? Oh, it reminds me of a great song. Stand, stand, and stand. Mm. Just stand. No, you need to kneel. You need to bow down. No, I need to stand. I am going to stand. Mm. When it comes, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still extremely proud to be an American, not false pride, but just we have an amazing country. And like somebody has said, it might have been you. This this country falls. Oh my gosh! I mm. mean, isn't this like the last bastion of? That's of, what they call us. I think that's what they literally call us. The last bastion of hope. I think is what they say. I've been called oh, oh bastion. Um, oh my! I know. No, I'm just being a twit. But <laughs> anyway, I you know, and I do. I really. Wow, these are the moments that I get all pumped about, and then. I get done with the show and I'm back to the same old, you know, like, so what's today's going to be? What is today going to be? Mm. It's just too easy I, to be lazy. I think we can take away though. I'm taking away. The reason why I'm doing this is more clear and evident every day. It's to, it's to keep this fight of freedom going and not letting it stay at 254 years of fighting, not letting it stay at, you know, and to their credit, the civil rights movement, that was a movement of freedom. All these rights movement we've seen is a movement of freedom that shows this country didn't stop at 1776. We kept going. We keep going into the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s. It's just now the fight has turned into a very different revolution of sorts. It's more like a we don't like you anymore kind of revolution. And I don't want that. I want to rev. I want to. I want to keep us free from that. I'm going to hang up two more flags. Which ones? American. Nice. I got, two, I, got, I got two more flags. I got two more thingies I can stick the flags in, which makes my... Hey, get this. I was actually thinking about putting up my really, 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 really nice American flag Okay. And take it and taken down the Trump flag for just the day. Okay. To make because I I do not worship Trump. I don't worship this country, but I gotta tell you, I'm gonna stand for this country. Well, and I think you're pointing out that today should not be political either. You know, by not putting the Trump flag up, I think you're recognizing yeah, yeah. And I and and be and because admit it, folks, but politics are very divisive. <clears throat> You don't say, as, as Nicolas Cage's meme says, you don't say. And, of course, he comes to mind today because he tried to steal the Declaration of National Treasure. I love that movie. Might be one worthwhile oh, watching. Again. Oh, totally worth watching. You haven't seen it yet? National Treasure. Look, I could watch it today, and six months from now, I'd be going, okay, it's a great movie. I wish I would have seen this earlier. I mean, Probably, that's how, as a matter of fact. Well, that's what makes, you know, that's having this issue with my memory, I kind of feel like I'm cheating on my wife all the time. <sighs> oh, lighten up. Jeez. So, <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just, I'm determined. And I hope you are too determined to keep us as safe as we can and as free as we can. You have been an inspiration for me this morning. I appreciate it think so i just i just read and i'm like hey, well dang. and and the other reason you're an inspiration is you got the orange face going on oh yeah you know the sun's not as bright out right now but it's cool that you got the sun here comes the sun do -do -do -do. little darling yeah okay the thing by the way speaking of britain a a great brit thomas Paine, was writing a lot during this time uh in 1776 about freedom and the authors of this book that i'm reading now surmise that his common sense was the blood sweat and what was the emotional drive that our fighters in lexington concord the delaware river had with them uh to make this country free because he was such a powerful writer and you know washington doesn't get enough credit by the way for that overnight middle of the night 
leading his team over the Delaware River in snow and ice to defeat the Brits. He doesn't get enough credit for that. There, we, you know, and again, that's why history is so important to understand that how people have, I get so choked up, and I do, when I see somebody, we have a National Guard, big National Guard outfit here in Boone with a, with a big black you know, helicopters and stuff. And I get so choked up when I see these folks in uniform who are literally willing to lay down mm. their life for my family and our freedom. It just, because I'm such a homeboy. Yeah. And well, I'm just so to, blown away by the, the love that lead these folks on a, Who bleed for our flag. Yeah. Also be honored. And not just on the 4th, not just on Memorial Day, not just on Veterans Day, but every day. They're bleeding um, uh, for the flag because they love this country so much and they love the people so much. And it's just, what, just even talking about it, I got a lump in my throat. Thinking of it, actually. <sighs> yep, Renegades. Got a song coming up. I'm, I'm going to try to play a bunch more music today, but maybe I will, maybe I won't. Anyway, okay, well. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, Michael, I hate to cut us short, but I did want to do one little bit on a personal story you might have seen on Facebook. Today is the birthday of someone that took me in to his very own suite at Yankee Stadium, George Steinberg. Oh, he would, he cool. would have been 90 today. And I just wanted to expound upon that. And you can stay with me on the line if you want to listen. Uh, but I just am I'm so motivated to talk about how. And I think I... Uh, we didn't know each other in January, but in January, my, our friend, Ray, my friend, Ray Negron, who also was mentored and really say has his life changed and saved by George Steinbrenner after graffitiing outside Yankee Stadium. George Steinbrenner didn't have him arrested. He made him a bat boy and taught him lessons in life as he was growing up. Pretty remarkable, actually. But um, Ray had brought to his show called The uh, Bat Boy, which is his story on stage. It's amazing. Where he talked about the 77 Yankees. And what he did was uh, he brought us all to Fort Hamilton to tell the stories that George Steinbrenner impacted our lives. I happened to be there, thank God. It was amazing. I told the troops of Fort Hamilton, I said, you know, George Steinbrenner loved the troops. George Steinbrenner was a supporter of our military. And so I, and he loved this country so much, Michael, that it's no surprise that he was born on July 4th. Our oh, cool. man loved, loved America so much and loved, you know, teaching kids at a very young age about life and having a family. I mean, he raised uh, four kids while owning the Yankees and being wow. dominant as a Yankee owner. And so today I'm wearing – this New York in honor of Mr. Steinbrenner and this great city and the Big Apple and America. Cause I think we're all, it's all intertwined. The Yankees represent America on a very spiritual level too. I used to have a term called spirituality, which I combined sports and spirituality. Cause that's my thing. And I, I love it. Yep. And, and so the Yankees bring a sports duality to this nation and to the world. And that's because a guy from Cleveland who was a ship owner decided to buy a team in 1973 and own that team to win seven, I believe seven world series as an owner of the Yankees. In, seven, in, seven, in 73. Uh, well, he, he bought the team in 73. He won in 77, 78. They don't get there until 95. They lose the wild card. They go back to the World Series in 96. They win 96, 98, 99, 2000. Nice. Four more. And are then one get, 2009, right, are, are, passed away. Are they going to change the name? Of what? Yankees. They better not. Yankees is, is – um, actually, you're right. That's a very patriotic name in and of itself. You know, we were the Could Yankees. Uh, against yeah. the Brits. That's, that was the thing. Could be um, an issue. Might offend somebody. Same. And so I just want to take a moment to say thank you, Mr. S, for opening your hearts and your door to my family and I. Yeah. 
I know you're looking down on us every day in, in the last 10 years. Um, there were a couple moments. It's interesting because I was about eight or nine at the time. So every day I'm reconstructing memories of, of my time up there. Mm-hmm. But even he knew I kind of had a wild spirit. You know, he once said to me, <laughs> he said to me, you know, either you go outside with your dad or you stay inside with me. You can't be jumping back and forth. And I, you know, Jump, I was jumping, like, jumping. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to stay in here and staying inside in that round table with Mr. Steinbrenner and GM Brian Cashman. Wow. And the executives is something I'll never forget. He also didn't want me to forget about school because I would bring some projects in to work on. And he's like, how's school going? This is the owner of the Yankees asking me. That, that is so, yeah, that is cool. I mean, this, is, this, is, this was the kind of man he was. And the best, one of the biggest memories I have is I had created along with a friend of mine, a list of free agents I wanted the Yankees to go after <laughs> at the trade deadline. This was how invested I was in the team. He takes this sheet of paper and tells his secretary, one of the, one of the secretaries upstairs in the suite, he says, you know, uh, have them send this down to Tampa. I want them to take a look at this. I kid you not, <laughs> had them take a look at my recommendation. He had me, um, well, th- there were some other things. I mean, he had me, uh, he had me look up other free agents and, and yeah. other things are in the winter. And he said, what do you think? So I literally poured through all this information. It was remarkable. But there were two personal things that I remember most uh, off the field stuff. As you might know, I competed in these games for the physically challenged, uh-huh. five to 21. And I gave him the medal I had won for the 800 meter dash at Mitchell Field in Long Island. Mike, he took this thing, he took this medal, and he hung it on his bullhorns that were sitting up in his suite, and he cared for it. Oh. New stadium opens up in 2009. Took a while for us to get up there, but we finally got up to suite to say thank you to him. He wasn't as well. And then I look, and I say, hey, Pop, look at that. They moved that medal from Yankee, the old Yankee Stadium to the new one, and it's still up in the suite, I think. That's cool. And that was something that George Steinbrenner took really, I think, pride in. And um, I miss him. And I, I, sometimes I wish I was a little older when I got to know him. Because, you know, what am I going to do? I'm, I, I can't be that intellectual age eight or nine to figure out what's going on. I'm just happy as a kid. I'm at Yankee Stadium. I'm in the streets of George. Like, there was this factor of just innocent happiness. Like, I, I wasn't going to. Intellectual happiness. Wow. But now that I'm older, I just am thinking and trying to reconstruct everything. Um, from those years, I think that's partly because my dad's getting older. I don't want to forget those times that I had with him as well. Yeah. But just because if I'm going to talk about the stories and the experiences that I've had, I want to at least get back that memory of, of all those times. Because to be honest, I, uh, do I remember going up to him? I think I do, but I just remember the times I was up there and he was always gracious to us. He had made a cake for me on my birthday in October. This was interesting. A uh, month and a, nine days after 9-11, the night of the Freedom Concert in New York, he made a cake for me on my birthday because I said to him five days earlier, you know, my birthday is coming up this weekend. We were going to face the Mariners in the ALCS. He said, we'll have a cake for you. Oh. And the third inning, he had the cake ready. Nice. This is this is the man that George Steinbrenner was. And I just always find it amazing that I've never seen somebody as more than just the person they are. I think that agitates people too because they're like, well, can't you see Trump's this, that, and the other? Well, no, here's who I actually see. I try and see people uh, who they are like Donald Trump in George Steinbrenner suite, as a matter of fact. And I know you got to go, but he shook my hand. Yeah, yeah. You know, this this started is going to be just, hey, I just want to share this little bit with you. And now we're at six minutes until I need I'll that. let you go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap oh. up. But I will let you go. Thank you for listening to me and hearing and, me and out. He, and he, here's, here's where you put me in a tricky situation. It's like, I didn't want to be rude. And I'm glad I got to listen. 
Um, so we'll just leave it that. You got an Alex, you have an amazing story, an amazing life. I am so glad you're doing what you're doing with your podcasting. And uh, uh, I'm thrilled to have gotten to meet you, but our friendship's over. Oh, no, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> your story's about, I mean, Yankee Stadium, and you're just like this all American. Uh, yeah. And I'm just, I feel so you're inspired to play. You're, you're inspired to play Bye Bye Birdie, Hugh, healthy, normal American boy, because. When I listen to that, despite all the shit I, yeah, there you go. All the stuff I go through on sometimes, like 103 fever last week. Yeah. Myself as this healthy, godly made American. In the image of God. We're all created in the image of God. It's an important thing to remember. And that one leg never has phased me. And I, I don't like talking down. And I don't want to seem like I'm talking about, but I just can't imagine this happening in an early life, early, you know, somewhere in life where I lose my like midlife. Like I can't, I can't fathom that. And so thank God I was made in his image the way he wanted me from the get go. Cause I think it's allowed me to just grow as a person through some hardship, through joy and ecstasy and not the ecstasy. But uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at this picture of my brother. Who had gone through, you know, had a stroke and all this stuff. What kept you going? The Lord, my friend Linda, and myself, I'm determined. A proudest accomplishment, being able to dress myself and take a shower by myself. Isn't that powerful? Self-reliance, baby. Huh? Self-reliance, baby. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Reliance. That is what today is about. And we're not going to submit to those that want to tear down everything about this society. Not on my watch, not on Radio Hope's watch. We've had it. I'm Alex Garrett. We'll be back in a bit. I am going to read these speeches from Washington and Jefferson in a bigger podcast. I just got to read through them, oh. pick the best parts, and then we'll take okay. it from there. Michael, okay. have a great show at 9 a.m. Eastern. Right. Bye. Bye. As for me, I'm Alex Garrett. Happy 4th of July. As we continue... To honor America today, do it well, celebrate well, safely, and from a good place, and from a good place. I'll be back. I am going to do a Saturday sit down. No guest, just me kind of continuing the conversation. Uh, stay with us here on Alex Garrett Podcasting, and we'll be back soon.